Yes, hello, welcome everybody to the eighth episode of the Mod Extra podcast. We're two UK-based man nerds who like to get together every couple of weeks to talk about our nerdy lifestyles. I'm Chris, otherwise known online as True Mr. Six, and he over there is Andy. Hello, aka Mike Lowry. I want to be, I want to be like Mike. Pow! There we go. Uh, intro rating out of ten. I'll give that a good nine. A good nine? That was a good one, mate. No way. That was right off the top of my head, just just went straight into it. Hey, you know, what, what I always say is you work best under pressure, last minute. <laughs> <laughs> ba, 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 ba. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to do Ice Ice Baby. No, no. Ice Ice Baby is different. It, Ice Ice Baby goes da, 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 Whereas... Under Pressure by Queen and David Barry goes, ba 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 Completely different. Completely different, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen that famous interview with him where he tries to justify the fact that they ripped off Queen? No, I've not. I just thought he just blatantly just did it. <laughs> no, he's like, no, it's different, man. It's different. And then goes on about this one random note. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a famous bit of interview anyway hello there hello you and listeners it's time for the eighth episode eighth episode indeed let me know in the comments below your score for my intro is it better is it worse oh nice i like that do you agree with andy's nine listen and listen all the way through to hear the outro and whether it's equally up to scratch <laughs> Here's a challenge for you. We'll go through all of this. Oh, Jesus, yeah, we need to do something. Our average listen time, people keep dropping out early. Don't go. Yeah. Stay. We're very musical. Scooter. Today. Yeah, cool. Have you been all right? Yeah, not too bad. I'm a bit sleepy tired today. I'm a bit yawny, Whoa. yawny, stretchy. Come on, keep, keep it going. Early, Momentum. Early, early start to the day. Yeah, need to keep plowing, plowing ahead. Other than that, I am doing a okay. Uh, we've got lots lined up for our lovely, lovely listeners in this episode. Yes, we do. But before we get into that, we like to do a bit of a rundown. Talk about our last two weeks. So I'll ask you, my man, what have you been up to since we previously recorded? Uh, cool. Well, I will ki- I will try and keep this relatively short and sweet. Uh, Movie-wise, I introduced my son to Die Hard 2, uh, so I managed to get that in again, not in Christmas time either, uh, which was cool. I needed to shield his eyes through a couple of sections, but I knew which ones those were, <laughs> so that was fine, and he thoroughly enjoyed that. I had, it must have been Amazon Prime, uh, do you know when it suggests another the next thing and it's always rubbish? Well, yeah. I was watching something and Amazon Prime, Prime went, tell you what you want to watch next you want to watch next under siege and i was like you know what under Pro- amazon prime you are 100 percent correct there is nothing more i want to do in my life than watch under siege oh and i did God. what a movie what a movie fantastic um very much enjoyed that that's that's interesting that you watched day hard too that's um that's got a lovely little connection to um main movie segment this week does it yeah did you not know this? Enlighten me and the listeners. Doug Richardson was the writer of of both. Oh, I, I never read the names at the end. Okay, fair enough. Well, fair play. Well, to Bad Boys that. had about fifteen writers on it, I think. <laughs> Did it? <laughs> One of them. Well, three, three writers. But yeah, Doug Richardson watched Bad Boys. Obviously, that was fantastic. Really enjoyed the watch party. Uh, or this. Monday, as we we're recording this, that went ahead. Thank you, everyone who joined us for that. Definitely doing that again. Uh, I also managed to devour the whole th- season three of Cobra Kai with my wife, which did not disappoint. Brilliant. Just there's nothing that compares to that. That is like the pinnacle to me of top quality televisual entertainment. Oh, my word. I know, it's high praise from such a learned <laughs> critic. Um, and I also, I took a, another look at The Expanse after your, um, your last week talking about it and the, the week before, and I tried it over the Christmas period, but I must have been in a bad mood because I tried it this week that just gone. Very much enjoyed it. Devoured season one, on to season two now. 
So that's good. Ooh. Definitely check it out. It is just as Chris described it. It's like Firefly meets Battlestar Galactica. So it's got the, I suppose, the the small kind of team working together of Firefly, but it's more serious. Uh, that's not a word. It's more serious than than Firefly. It's less of a because Firefly is funny. I would like enjoy it for the comedy, but yeah, it's 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 brilliant yeah really good so yeah got rid of the first season on to season two um hopefully by the time we get to season five they'll have just finished spoon feeding it so i could just binge <laughs> that as well yeah it's painful man I bet, it's painful. I bet. this week's was a bit of a slow episode as well oh <laughs> i hate that and it's uh, nothing happened and you got another week to wait great yes uh reading wise um i've got through the alien omnibus volume two so i read genocide if you keen to give that a read then do it's very very good um and the second book in that omnibus is alien harvest which is a bit meh uh, if i'm completely honest uh and i've just started something a little bit different it's called the thursday murder club written by the guy from pointless richard osman uh it's more of a like a murdery mystery miss marpley type thing i bought it for the wife of christmas she finished it and i've grabbed that but it's a actual book which is really annoying. The dude from Pointless? Yeah, Richard Osman, the um, guy with the glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's good. So far, I'm not far into it, but very good. I will let you know what I think next episode. And I've realised how much I read. I didn't realise I read as much as I did until I started doing this. <laughs> well, that's, that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah, because I'm intellectual. Expands your mind, grows your vocabulary. In it. Introduces you to new ideas. Yeah. Cool. And that, tis moi. Check that out. That was a lot more concise than last week. Last week, last yeah, episode. Was yeah. Yeah, was it? Um, I can't recommend The Expanse more highly, um, disp- even despite this week's being a, a slow episode. So... I'm, I'm jumping on board the expanse train that Andy just started there. Thing is, it's a slow episode because because I'm hungry for more. It's not a slow episode because it was a bad episode. It was a slow episode because I was eager for it, for it to keep going and to give me more. You know. Yeah, I get that. I love a good binge. Yeah, yeah, I'm the same. I, I, but you know, we're we're both in the same choir on this one. Can't be doing with drip feeding at all. Speaking of drip feeding, I suppose we're about to find out. Have you dipped your toe into uh, one division yet? I have, yeah. Ooh, I have. I'm, I'm trying to do the same as the uh, Mandalorian. I'm not sure. My wife wants to watch it as well. So not only am I going to try and hold off to get the whole lot, but also she may interfere with those plans. But um, so far, not watched it or seen any spoilers other than a uh, lots of praise. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it gets it's a funny one. I'll not say too much until you, um, you know, yeah, caught up and what have you. But it, it starts off with a very strange tone, and it, it it doesn't give you a great deal. Really? Um, yeah, I, I mean, uh, me and the wife were talking about it after we watched it. She was a bit like, "What? What have I just watched?" I'm like, "Well, you see, there's you know, there's obviously a thing going on, and blah blah blah." You've seen the trailer enough to know that there's this sort of weird. Yeah, I've seen the trailer. So it's, it's kind of starts off a bit like I Dream of Genie or um, mm. the one with the witch. Uh, they're bewitched, which were bewitched. both yeah. really similar. And then something happens and they're trapped in 1920s TV land or something. Well, yeah, I mean, it doesn't give you a great deal on that front uh, in terms of what's going on external to this right weird alternative reality thing that's going on. We just know that they are in an alternative reality and something's not right. And me and the wife were talking about it, and she was like, "Why do they do that? It's it's so annoying." And I'm like, "Well, because they don't want they don't want people signing up for you know, whatever thirty day free trials and then devouring it, yeah, and then." cancelling before it's finished up so they need to keep coming back for more cheeky buggers yeah but there is a yeah there's clearly something something amiss that's very clearly the case right out of the gate uh, but it's very interestingly filmed like the way they've sort of replicated as you've just said that that 50s 
sitcom Dick Van Dyke show bewitched dreamer genie style thing that they got going huh? on. I said twenties, that's way too early. Yeah, fifties. Uh, yeah, I don't, they didn't. Did they even? They didn't even have telly in the twenties. I don't. <laughs> no, they had prohibition and Tommy guns and, ra- and radio. <laughs> the wireless. This is the news. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I did. I did jump into that. Cool. And watched the first two episodes, and that's uh, every Friday. I think they're doing the new one, new episode. Bum, bum, bum. Ex- Expanse on a Wednesday and One Division on a Friday. I watched Expanse today. Ace. Well, well, I had my lunch, warmed a couple of sausage rolls in the oven, and then settled in with a bit of brown sauce. It's nice. We do that as well. N- nothing like chucking a sausage roll in the oven, heat it up a bit crusty on the outside, or warm in the middle. A lot nicer oh, yeah. than microwaving it. Absolutely, yeah. This was a shop-bought one, but the good lady, Mrs. Six, also makes these really cool homemade ones. Ooh, they sound nice. A bit got a bit of mustard in them and stuff it's lovely it's posh at your house eh oh yeah yeah well uh i think it's an old uh wartime recipe that like a granny taught her <gasps> guess what i had for dinner last night um I, was it from the trifecta <laughs> no it wasn't <laughs> it's, it's not wings because today's Wednesday. no it's it was uh, i'll give you a clue it wasn't a takeaway right it's something quite old-fashioned and i've never yeah. had it before it's like a little quiz never had it before i know my wife was like you what i was like no toad in the hole no i've had that i'll give you two more guesses and then we'll not like label too much on it shepherd's pie no that's my favorite dinner of all time um quite old fashioned fashioned. a bubble and squeak oh good try but no faggots oh yeah okay like never had a faggot as a kid it's very 80s yeah for a number of reasons, mostly because it was named by a company called Mr. Brains, which immediately made you think it was made out of brains. Secondly, that just the name faggot's not very nice. And no, I was about to say, I don't know if it is it into, does it travel well. No, I don't know. But it's it, 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 but, international mm. listeners might be a bit like what what? It's it's like a big meatball, and it's called a faggot. Mm. And it's got like the herbs and spices in. Uh, but yeah, never had it. Also, like my sister liked it as a kid, which meant I didn't like it because I would do the opposite to what she did. So I've never tried it. <laughs> and I was like, oh my word, this is this is a, this is a, f- a taste sensation. This is is ticking all the right boxes. So yeah, very nice. Well, very good. I'm glad you enjoyed your dinner, home cooked meal. It was. It was like uh, we it, like we'd gone back in time to the 80s, and I'd gone round to like my mate's m- house for dinner. And she cooked up faggots, mash and peas, and then we had sponge pudding and custard for afters. It was lovely. That yeah, that is uh, that is pretty. I was stuffed as well. <laughs> we, we were waiting for Dad to get home from mill so I could have me faggots yeah. and have me sponge pudding. <laughs> anyway, what have yeah. you been up to these last two weeks, other than on One Division? Yeah, uh, One Division was on my list, so. I've been watching a it's a period comedy called The Great. Well, that sounds great. Hey, yeah, it is. It was pretty good actually. It's very. It's about Catherine the Great, set in the Russian aristocracy during the period of Peter the <laughs> Second. Sounds. I'm sure it's very good. It sounds like something my wife would use the word watch. Yeah, it's, it's better than it sounds. It's it's not a period. It's not your traditional period drama. It's um, it's all about the kind of uh, I don't know the excesses and you know flamboyance of palace life. The the prince is a is a little shit. Uh, is it is it more phrase. the Tudors than say Pride and Prejudice or something like that? Oh, I've never watched the Tudors, so I can't. I am unable to comment. But it's a comedy. It's it's written as a oh, comedy. Okay. So, yeah. Um. So all sorts of wild and wacky things happen, <laughs> but they're actually really quite brutal. So there's that. Nice. Ground the conversation to a slow crawl with that one, didn't I? You did. What? did so like, period. period drama. Like we've lost like five viewers, listeners, whatever they are. <laughs> Start talking about that, and so, unless it's Bridgerton. No, well, that's the new Netflix thing, isn't it? That everyone's talking about yeah, shagging left, right, and center on that. Jeepers creepers! Really? Every time yeah, I watch, like, I thought, I thought my my missus was watching porn. Got all excited. 
And it, no, it was just Bridgerton off Netflix. It's like bloody hell. Well, you know. Now I've ground the conversation to a halt, but we've, yeah, we've, we've gained five listeners that. for the mention of the word porn. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that's going on. That's on Channel 4 right now. So we're a few episodes into that. Uh, but also, talking about Channel 4, I noticed that uh, I've been watching a cartoon called Primal. Do, do you remember uh, Samurai Jack? No. You ever watched that? No. No. It's quite a famous cartoon. Uh, it's by a guy called Gendy Tartakovsky. He's a very well-known animator. Oh, I'll tell you what else he did do. was uh, There was a Star Wars Clone Wars cartoon that he did that you may have seen. Oh, yeah. There's loads of series of that. Uh, no, not not the computer-generated one, like the cell-animated one. Yeah, I'm sure that was the one that I... Yeah, it's quite a few episodes. Oh. quite a few series of it. Um, uh, maybe I didn't think there was that. I didn't think there was that many of them, but that just means I possibly haven't seen them. Uh, and he did Dexter's Laboratory. Oh, I know that. When you lead with that one, <laughs> and some other stuff. But he's a very famous animator. He's got this new cartoon. I say it's new. It's two series long, uh, so it's taken this while to come on telly did, over here. Do the fairy godparents? I don't know. I like them. They're funny. Anyway, good work. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, and then I gave the first couple of episodes of Doom Patrol a try. Oh, see, I've I've eyed that up, but it's not been free. No, it's not. I've it's on this Stars Play thing. Yeah, so I've done a seven day free oh. trial, and I'm trying to mm, yeah. <laughs> use as much as you can. Yeah, in the seven days. So, but it didn't it didn't settle right with me. Actually, I thought I'd enjoy it, and I'm usually not too bad with stuff that's a bit off the wall. And I, I've read Doom Patrol comics. I used to read the Grant Morrison run many, many years ago. So I'm familiar with the characters, and I know the storyline that they're replicating in the TV yeah, show. It's the dude- and it's got Alan Tudyk in it, who's oh, he's brilliant. He's marvellous. You know, he's good in everything he does. Yeah. Is, is it? Is this the dudes that were in Titans? Isn't it? Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot that actually, but yes, because um, Beast then joins them, doesn't he? Yeah, Beast, Beast Boy. Boy, that's where they meet him. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that, actually. But yes, you're right. And it was so kind of, it's okay, but it's slow going. Sorry. Uh, the Titans, it was kind of set up that you would get more of them because uh, the metal guy, which is called... Oh, God, I knew you must know that. The, Cliff. <laughs> yeah, what's his act, like name? Like the Iron Man. Or, uh, they, they call him Robot Man. Robot Man, that's it. Because yeah. in Titans, it was... Um, Brendan Fraser. Yeah, he is in. It's the same. Yeah, it's the same, but it's because it's not on Netflix, though. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I can't explain that. I don't know that, but they, they definitely. It's definitely same actors existing in the same. Yeah. Wow, into crossover Netflix Amazon. That's blown my mind. That's well. You have to remember that in the states, it's the uh, the DC Universe streaming service that has it. Oh, okay. So, so in America, Warner Brothers have their own streaming service. I think it's called DC Universe or DC, probably DC Plus. They're all called Plus now. DC TV. Um, some, something along those lines, yeah. Uh, DC Flicks and uh, DC Prime. Uh, and that's it has um, the Titans and Doom Patrol on there, as well as the new the Harley Quinn cartoon, the new Harley Quinn animated series, which has been on on. Uh, Channel Four over here. Uh, oh, okay, that's so more th- sense. I think just different people have you know, scooped them up for their channel. Oh, I get so, yeah, yeah. But it's pretty, it's all right. It's pretty good. Alan Tudyk, he he does the voiceover, like a narrator voiceover thing. But he's also kind of the villain, um, and he's really, really good. And actually, everything about it's really good. I'm not sure why it's not sitting right with me because <laughs> the more I sit here and think about it, I'm like, it's actually it's really well written, it's well performed. It's fun. It's got a good fun energy about it. The first one's always a little bit shit, though, isn't it? The first, yeah, quite I'm, often. I'm three episodes in now. Yeah, it would like maybe get better. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stick with it anyway, at least until my seven day trial. Oh yeah, of course. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see where we go from there. So that's that's all my kind of TV stuff. I haven't watched any films in the last two weeks i've not watched anything movie wise and then in the comic book world i've been reading the new there's a a big dc comics event called future state going on at the moment where they've kind of they've leapt forward 30 years 
and they're looking at where characters are Ooh. in 30 years time that sounds exciting. kind of interesting yeah, it's, it's, it's good. I've, I've not read everything. I've just read the ones I'm interested in reading. So I've read a couple of the Batman ones, the Wonder Woman's, the Justice League. Yeah. Um, and they're all right. They're all right. I'm not I'm not fully convinced <laughs> by what's going on, to be honest. it's It sometimes bothers me when they do these big crossover events because they hit the pause button on stories that are going on to do it right and you just want to know what's happened next yeah absolutely the x-men have just done it recently with um they've just done a a crossover thing called the sword of x so all the ongoing narratives just went on hold while they did this big crossover thing and now they've just now they've just restarted they finished the crossover and gone back to everything that was going on and I was reading my comic books this month and being like, oh, yeah, I forgot that you'd done that. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean? Uh, so I'm not fully convinced, but they've got a big, like, a great lineup of, I mean, some of the artists and writers they've hooked for it are, are very, very good. And also I'm a bit lost in it because I think I've missed something somewhere just prior to this happening that sets it up a bit better. Right. So something's happened and done a universe-wide impact. And I've missed maybe something key in that. Okay, look, I'm sure it will come out in the wash. I, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> Just sort of reading my way through blind at the minute. And there you go. That's that's me. That's my two weeks. Ooh. Oh, no, it's not. Ooh. Hang on. One more thing. I've been playing Crap Down 3 on my Xbox. Oh, cool. I played the first yeah. one. That's good. So is that the superhero? You can develop your abilities and then you've got an open plan city to run around in and... Yeah, that's uh, and Crackdown Three is almost exactly the, the same. <laughs> exactly the same, yeah. Uh, but it's fun enough, you know. It's one of my f- my Game Pass games that I get as part of my new Game Pass membership, which I think I mentioned a couple of episodes ago. You did. It's very cool. Let's not so, forget our Apex win. Uh, has that been since we last recorded? Does it? I think so. I think it was. When was that? It wasn't that long ago? I don't think. <laughs> don't know. Well, so we win so often, it's hard to, you know. Yeah, well, obviously. Um, so uh, there's there's that. We have been playing the Apex, and clever clever Chris here has only managed to work out how to get the sound of both of us talking at the same time. Oof. It only takes like yeah, in a, a mad like scientist laboratory in his front room to do it, but he's done it. Yeah, it's convoluted, and it's not. It's my capture card and my setup is is not working as it should be. I'm I'm using random workarounds. Hashtag Chris should buy a PlayStation. <laughs> Let's get it trending. I'd rather a console for men than little boys. What would you prefer, PlayStation or Xbox? Put that in the comments below. See how many we get each. Um, well, I'm quite confident that we have discerning, mature. The highest of taste in our audience, and therefore it will be Xbox all the way. I dispute all those points, so I think it will be PlayStation all the way. <laughs> Do you know what I got? Um, it, when it when it all comes down to it, I know there's a lot of like super nerds who do the whole oh the processing power and the graphics DPI frame rates and the fan spins this fast and all that bollocks. I just don't like the PlayStation controller. You'd get used to it easy enough. Nah. Nah, I ain't going to change your mind. And so you can have no, well, a lounge of wires. The thing is, they've got um, they've got me pretty locked in now because I've been within the sort of Microsoft ecosystem for so long that I'd be loath to move off it and lose all the you know, all the games I've downloaded for, over the years and True story. I've continued to move from one machine to the next to the next, if you know what I mean. Yeah, that makes sense. Once they got your claws yeah. in, a bit like Apple and iPhones, isn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah. That's it. Once you're in, you're in. So there's also an element of that at play. Eat by gum. Right. Let's tell the listeners what we've got going up this episode. Okay, then. Uh, which which way around are we doing it this episode? We did, forget. We did movies first last week, so should we do uh, comic books first? 
Yeah, okay then. Well, uh, we're, we're going to open up with the comic book corner where we're taking a look at the Wildstorm title, The Authority. I asked Andy to get through the first two volumes, but when I went and had a look on the online service that we use, it was they didn't have the collections. You could only do issue by issue. So I'm not sure how far you did or didn't get. We'll, we'll find out, I suppose. In a moment. Well, indeed. Uh, but a number of writers over the years with that. Uh, and then over to Andy's Retro Corner, where we're taking a look back at the 1995 action classic, Bad Boys by Michael Bay. Down, 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 down. I've been, I Googled, I wanted to try and find out how many times he's actually used that soundtrack. And I couldn't find the answer anywhere. I think, think that in particular song is just Bad Boys. The down, 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 down. But then he uses a pretty much the same variety of instruments and kind of mm. s- very similar for all the other song songs movies movies yeah uh and then our third rando i've got no idea about my andy's prepped it up so i'm going in blind it's a I, I am unable to i am <laughs> unable to intro that one because i've got no idea what's happening only one way to find out folks Absolutely. Um, stay till the end, <laughs> please. <laughs> uh, and when when that's all done and dusted, that'll take us to the end of the episode. Sounds good. Shall we yeah. dive in? Let's do it. Splash. Yes, welcome back then, listeners. So here we are at Chris's Comic Book Corner. And if you're listening for the very first time, let's give you a little bit of context. So my man Andy over there is a little bit of a comic book novice. So I have been each episode introducing him to a title or a collection or a miniseries or whatever it may be, comic book related, that is something I'm particularly fond of, whether it be, well, we've had all sorts of stuff, haven't we? Stuff I'm nostalgically fond of or things that are significant to the world of comic books or just titles that I particularly enjoy. And in... Last episode, I challenged Andy to dive into the Wildstorm title, The Authority. A uh, number of writers, Brian Hitch, Warren Ellis, Mark Miller. There's been a few big names who've uh, had their ink and quilt on this one. I'll read you the blurb from the DC Comics website. After witnessing the demise of most of her Stormwatch teammates, Jenny Sparks wants to create a new superhero team dedicated to protecting Earth against threats of a global scale. Joined by former Stormwatch members Jack Hawksmoor and Shen Li Min, Jenny recruits four new members, the Doctor, the Engineer, Apollo, and the Midnighter, forming the ultra-powerful Authority. Ooh. There you go. There's the DC description. I like that. Quite detailed, in fact. It is. Yeah. You probably weren't aware of the fact that it was part of a, the whole Stormwatch thing, unless I mentioned, did I mention? No. So what was Stormwatch? It was a monthly series, a previous monthly series that uh, the, the Jenny Sparks, Jack Hawksmoor, and uh, the uh, Shen Li characters were introduced in. Shen Li's the one with the like wings. With, with the wings, yeah. The kind of Hawk Girl style thingy, yeah. Uh, it um, refers back to it, I kind of guess, because there's um, the two which have kind of retired and they're just like admin support. Yes, that's right, yeah. Yeah, so that- yeah, and she calls him up and says, "Give me a hand." <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, so yeah, I, I got that. That's cool. Yeah, but understand knowing that and understanding that aren't at all required to enjoy the title of the authority. It, does, it very much just forges its own path. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's hard. I mean, I kind of guess that there could have been something before, but quite often, uh, certainly with kind of sci-fi, fantasy, superhero stories, it doesn't always start at the beginning. Where you know the start doesn't start at the beginning; it starts, you know, after an event, or there's some history to it, like like, yes, like Star yeah. Wars, the Episode Three. That was the first one, purposefully started in the middle. It kind of like cuts away a lot of the chaff that you could, if it was you know, Star Wars analogy, if he was successful, he could go back to, and obviously did. Uh, uh, do you mean Episode Four? Yeah, sorry, yeah, Episode Four. Yeah, um, I said three, I meant four. So yeah, I was like, is he talking about Revenge of the Sith? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I started watching that the other day. I've got to finish it. Um, oh, co- controversial! I think that's the worst of the lot. Do yeah, I I can I've yeah. I've not watched it since I went to the cinema to watch it. So I'm give I've given it another go over. We didn't get any votes. Nobody voted. Uh, we asked the audience whether they'd be interested in a Star Wars special, didn't we? 
I think we have our answer. <laughs> well, perhaps, yeah, perhaps that's the case. Oh, we might do it anyway, though. Um, uh, yeah, so that was what I said. So, so I wasn't sure if there was actual content before it, although I understood that there was a history to the story that was I was reading. Yeah, but it's, it's certainly not required reading to understand nah. or leap into the authority at all. In fact, the large majority of the villains and characters are introduced for the very first time. Oh, cool. Um, So how far did you get through? Because as I said in the intro, I I wasn't able to secure the collections for you. So I just downloaded a lot from from this run, from this volume. There's obviously been subsequent volumes, but from this uh, kicking off in around 1999 or 2000. Uh, So how far did you manage to plow through? Uh, So I got to... uh, well, not episode uh edition issue issue 16 so i got through it's cut up into four About halfway four issue kind of story arcs so i got yes. through four yeah. different story arcs yeah okay cool just so as i know so the what happened in the one that you that you're up to so i don't well you may not want to continue i don't know but just just in case um no no i i, I definitely do uh they have just saved a baby Ah, uh, yeah, the uh, millennial baby. Yes, that's the one. Quant- Jenny Quantum. Indeed, that's it. So yeah. that got to the end of that uh, arc. Yeah. Oh, is that uh, Frank Quietly? Quietly draws that bit, I think. Oh, cool. If I remember right. I didn't notice a big variety in the art, but I did enjoy all of it. I thought it was brilliant. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so give us your notes then. You've got some notes, I'm sure. I'm okay. Happy. So I very much enjoyed this. It was definitely up my street. It had a lot of the elements of all the other bits and series and, and comic books that you've put my way. And it kind of all, a lot of the good bits. So it's a superhero storyline, which is cool. I like superheroes. The artwork is more modern. It, you know, there's more colour, so it's more feast for the eye. I, I liked the way it was chopped up into four issue kind of story arcs i don't know if the others did and i didn't notice uh but certainly kind of having to download each issue that made it more obvious to me uh so that was all very very cool because i knew i was coming through four it says at the beginning it says one of four uh so I knew, yeah. I knew i knew i was coming to the end of a particular story on the fourth one which is cool uh the characters now we've spoken about different characters spoken about uh watchman where watchman may go, have a, a couple of issues just on backstory of a character similar with preacher yeah. that may take like three four five issues just to go back and have a look at what someone's done in the past what i liked about this is that you knew exactly what the character was all about whilst you were going through the uh the story and it was it's, i don't know how they done it I, I, but i did but you knew what they were all about like the dude whose power is the king of cities so he takes his power from cities and like without having a really i still don't really know what that's all about i knew exactly what that was about if that makes sense yeah yeah jack hawks more yeah and it's uh that's he's a very interesting character because it's not it's not a traditional superpower either i mean they've got traditional superpowers they've got like a sun charged so he's superman isn't he Super dude, yeah, and a Dark Knight style martial artist, and Jenny Sparks is all about electricity, and you got a Hawk Girl kind of flyer type person, and a robot lady, and a, and a wizard, and you know they're all kind of very traditional uh, archetypal characters. But Jack Hawksmore's just something a little bit different. Yeah, and I liked him. Uh, he's cool. Actually, I liked all of them. They all had quite individual personalities, which again, you got without having to labour over it. It's, but I, I, honestly, I don't know how they did it. Obviously, I've read it. But just from going through a, a four, kind of four issue, here's a baddie, they're in a problem, they've got through it and they've won, which is the same story for pretty much everything. <laughs> Whilst going through that, you got an idea of each individual character, what they're about, what they could do, what their abilities were. Like, I was like, this Batman dude... What's he do? Is he like Batman? And then very quickly learned out that he could kind of almost see forward in time and go through all different kind of eventualities of how the fight was going to go down uh, and pick yeah. the way to win all through you know, a few dialogue boxes. So I like that because it 
it was really engaging quite quickly and i got uh kind of invested in the characters uh jenny sparks is super hot <laughs> she's a badder she's super bad uh she's awesome and like so i liked her for that reason <laughs> you could Mid- midnighter is arguably the most popular character from the series oh is he if you were to, yeah if you were to stop an authority fan in the street and say you know who's your favorite uh many people choose midnighter i also i really like the fact that he's in a gay relationship with the S- superman guy was it apollo apollo yeah, yeah I, I love the fact that that's in there brilliant i don't think it's ever been done before uh, and works it's really good yeah and they don't they don't labor it do they they write it very much as they are just a, they're just a couple you know it's not it, they're not telling lgbtq stories they're just a they're just a gay couple yeah they're just that's, that's just how it is yeah and there's no yeah there's no commentary or um or they're not tackling any uh, particular homosexual issues they're just a gay couple and everybody accepts that on the team and nobody cares and it just it's just normal yeah which by today's standards in 2020 but you have to remember that this first came out in 1999 i really thought about that yeah no that's really yeah. quite uh exceptional so that's cool um yeah. there's a cool bit where he's like oh, there's a guy half dead on the floor and he's like what you're not man enough to kill me and he's like no i promised you to someone else and then midnight it turns up with what looks like some kind of industrial like jackhammer <laughs> yeah. and chucks it through his head <laughs> 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 so oh, okay so yeah so I, I'm not, I suppose i'm not too far in but in all intents and purposes like it i'd, I'd go as it's one of the favorites that you've thrown my way so far wow yeah yeah uh, what what do you think has placed it so highly in you in your opinion oh that's a good question so yeah i mean i found i find without the nostalgia element behind say the x-men that we read uh and the justice league that we read uh that it doesn't grab me as much um it's a little bit old-fashioned i'm reading a comic book or a graphic novel uh because i want to enjoy the artwork as much as the story and if the artwork which could have been really good at the time and quite exciting at the time but isn't now doesn't quite yeah. latch on to me. So I think there's a bit of that. I like a superhero story, but they're all brand new. A little bit like Planetary in the fact that that's less so much of a superhero story, but it's a kind of a investigative, it's like a team fighting crime nonetheless with superpowers. Uh, <laughs> so maybe they are, but they're completely different, which is quite cool as well. Because I know the X-Men, I know the Avengers, I know the Justice League to a degree, uh, but these are all completely brand new, but still really well thought out if that makes sense, like a Batman comic you could throw at me, it's going to have 75 years worth of history to it. So it's going to be like, he's a well-fleshed rounded character that's been thought and changed and crap's happened to him, etc. But you know, the characters within the authority and, and planetary as well, definitely have been well thought out. And you can tell that. Yeah. They're very, very well written. I suppose you're getting the character development before you, before your eyes, aren't you? Whereas. Like yeah. Say, there's, just such a depth of history. You don't need to have read some obscure run of a title that happened in the eighties to get what's going on. It's all it's all there happening in front of you. Definitely, I, I like it. One of the reasons it appeals to me is, uh, and you've possibly sensed this in some of the other stuff I put in front of you. I like it when somebody takes the traditional idea of comic book stuff and then just subverts it and fucks with it a little bit and comes at it from a different angle and i feel like the authority does that a great deal yeah i can see that yeah I mean, it is a group the... of superheroes saving the world <laughs> yeah but they uh they there's like morally they're a bit gray aren't they you know yeah and... i've only kind of started hinting on that where they're like so in, in a part of it they stop a, a dictator and they're all then all the world powers are like you can't do that and it's like we can stop it so we will watch yeah. watch yourself mate <laughs> to the pre- yeah. like the president of the US <laughs> you watch yourself mate didn't not in those words so yeah i could see that they are quite gray area yeah, yeah yeah absolutely and they are uh, they're very they're very liberal there's some stuff that happens a bit later on like uh, and also like the um uh, the magician 
uh, uh, what's, what's his code name? The Doctor. The Doctor. Yeah, uh, he you know he's from Amsterdam. He likes he likes himself a bit of uh, a bit of the ganja to relax in the evening. Very liberal kind of views, um, and he he gets up to some no good down the line. But yeah, they're they're not afraid of of using their power to do what they think is right, whatever the consequence or the implications of that. That's cool. It it sounds like there's more to come on that vein that I've not got to yet. Um, yeah. So that's quite cool. Did you did you make the connection or see the parallels between Jenny Sparks and Elijah Snow from Planetary? Of oh, course. Well, he 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 was born in the 1900s, wasn't he? Yeah. It, well, oh, in, 1900, in 1900 on yeah. the first of January. So oh, I didn't, but I see it now. You pointed it out to me. Yeah. Yeah. They don't. They don't. They don't do a great deal with that. Particularly not. They they, they they leave it all quite unsaid that there's this this group of characters in in that universe in the Wild Store universe that were born on the first of January nineteen hundred, the century babies they call them, uh, and that Jenny Quantum on the first of January two thousand is the first of the next generation. Oh, yeah, but they don't really do a great deal with it. It's just like a thing. Um, it's just what happens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, they they may have done, and I've not I've not read when they've right. tied that all together or done something with it. But yeah, I just wondered if you'd clocked that uh, the white suits and and stuff. No, well, she doesn't really wear white suits, does she? She um, she mostly wears like Union Jack t shirts. In many <laughs> ways, she's a little bit like you. <laughs> Not, not really. I, no. I only wish I had some sort of superpower that lets me travel through telephone lines or whatever. Oh, she's not done that yet. Oh, and she smokes. Oh my god, she smokes like an eighties character in a movie. <laughs> she does. Yeah, like, um, and that's the point. She's she's, she's not going to you know. die, so she can do whatever she wants. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good. I'm glad you enjoyed this one. I think. Um, Elijah Snow, he he smokes all. The, no, he has one now and again. That was the the line, wasn't it? He has one, what two a yeah. year. Yes, yeah. And so does Jaquita. How and how did he know that? Oh, just oh. A, something he heard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they had a, they've they've had a couple of different artists, I think, through the stretch that you've read. I'll have to go back and have a look and see which. I've got when you read comic books, right? Hmm. Did you find that? because I found this, that you, you're reading it and it gets to an exciting bit. So you're reading it and then you don't see the, the picture. I don't understand what you mean. So I will have like it open, like I'll be reading it and then it'll be an exciting bit and things are happening. And then I'll be reading the, the speech bubbles and I'll be getting a general idea of who's saying it, but I won't actually be looking at the picture. And then I might have to be like, oh, hold on a second and flick back a couple of pages and then look at the picture. But I've got engaged in the storyline. I'm trying to like munch my way through it to find out what's happening. So I don't actually take in the 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 picture box, what's in the in the um the frame. So then I have to flick right. back and then have a look at the pictures. Or quite often I'll like I'll read through it and then I'll I'll flick back if like, and and then look through the the uh, look through it again uh and uh, take into account the pictures now i know what's going to happen because i get excited i need to know what happens next <laughs> yeah i've definitely uh yeah totally i've definitely done rereads to to have like a to have an artistic appreciation read as well as a like a get, get my fix need to know what's happening next kind of thing yeah i totally get that cool um and to to follow along and sometimes i do find myself flicking back like wait what <laughs> <laughs> do you know, yeah, what what yeah, it's not. I suppose that's the thing with comic books that isn't the movie experience that you can just sort of pause and flip back a couple of pages and go, "Oh, I see," you know, kind of thing. You know, yeah, rewinding or fast forwarding, or um, it's not as simple as uh, it's not as complicated as like digging out the last episode. Wait, what? You know, or if it, or if something's been on a six month hiatus or taking a break it's very easy just to go back and read the bit before and you're like all right i know i know what's going on now right you know um, but yeah no i totally do that yeah definitely cool yeah definitely do that i'm so i'm definitely planning on devouring the rest of this before i start whatever you're about to give me next yeah well i'm, I'm thinking about diving back into some more traditional superhero stuff Ooh. and this is one i can't remember who but someone commented a couple of 
uh, episodes back that I should put this in front of you. We're going to take a look at the Batman Nightfall storyline. Oh, Batman Nightfall. Yeah, and very very famous storyline. I've talked about it before with you um, when we when we discussed because uh, it's influenced a couple of f- film stories. Cool. Before it's quite quite a chunky one, so we'll just do the. It's broken down into several sections. We'll just do the the actual Nightfall bit, which was I think maybe eighteen or nineteen parts altogether. It's across two graphic novels, if I remember rightly. So I'll get you those volumes together. Very nice. Um, but it's a it's a Batman story from the nineties that's hugely famous, very well known in the comic book world. I look forward to it. Yeah, very good. Cool. Okay, well, well, there we go, folks. The uh, the authority gets the Andy England seal of approval. It does indeed. One on the recommendations list. Uh, we'll move on to the retro corner for our movie this week. Down, 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 down. Right, well, here we are then, folks. It's Andy's Retro Corner. This is where we look back at a classic movie from the 80s stroke 90s-ish, which is Andy's golden period of cinema. And we'll well, go back a few episodes to hear him gush over the quality of film through those two decades. But this week's challenge was Bad Boys, so I'll hand you over to the man himself to get us started. Yes, indeed. Bad Boys it was. And not only... Did we both watch it? But we watched it at the same time with some of you listeners, viewers, whatever YouTubers are called. And it was brilliant. So thank you very much, guys, who joined us. Uh, We are going to do it for the next one. Chris doesn't know that yet, but I've just told him. Uh, And we will get that set up. Do you want to do Monday again? Does that work for you? Uh, Maybe. (laughs) Okay. To be confirmed. I I quite often watch it. Uh, watch the film on the Monday just before we record. And and it's a, a belter. I'm very excited about it. But we'll put that, uh, we'll put a pin in that, as um, your manager would say at work. And we'll go back to Bad Boys. So we watched Bad Boys on Monday. And let me give you the back of the box for Bad Boys. Now, I was going to read the description off Netflix, but it's crap. So I've gone into. <laughs> um, at Amazon Prime, it's got a better description, so check this out. When $100 million of seized heroin is stolen from the Miami police lockup, detectives Lowry and Burnett, Miami's most mismatched cops, are called upon to solve the case before the FBI close their, inve- their department. Sorry, Julie is their only lead to a case, but will only speak to Lowry. As Lowry is not around when she calls, Burnett impersonates his cool, slick partner. A hilarious role reversal begins. That description is a bit naff. Mm. But it gives you idea in case you don't know what Bad Boys is all about. So, we watched it. I've not seen it for a while. I'm aware that it is one of the very few Michael Bay films, if not the only Michael Bay film, that is uh, tolerated by True Mr. Six over there. (laughs) That's true. I can't dispute that. So I've made some notes. My first note is a question to Mr. Six, which is, what makes this Bay film bearable to you while others are not? Uh, Great question. Uh, I was thinking about it while we were watching it. Uh, Two things, I think. The first, the Will Smith, Martin Lawrence charisma drives the story, I think, better than, say... Uh, like Nick Cage and Sean Connery are legends in their own right, of course, but they don't have the same pop, you know, chemistry. Yeah, it's not it's not there like it is with Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Um, certainly, there's there's nobody in the Transformers franchise who has that sort of energy about them. Uh, and the a lot of it, I think, was I, I could be wrong. I didn't look it up, but. I was always under the impression that some of it was kind of improvisational comedy stuff that they were just riffing and they just caught it on film. And so they weren't necessarily following the script all the time. Yeah. I can imagine it. They're both well within their capabilities to do that. Yeah. So it, it gives it a bit of a fresh energy. And 
uh, one thing I noticed when we were watching it on Monday was that the shaky cam stuff is much less objectionable to me compared to other Michael Bay films. I don't know whether that was because it was his first one and he hadn't fully perfected the method <laughs> <laughs> or something, but I found it less in your face and distracting. Now, whether that is, again, because I'm finding the characters much more fun to be with and therefore I don't notice it or but I was, I was sort of watching it with that eye, especially after we talked about The Rock a couple of episodes ago, and I found the cinematography less annoying. See, I have to admit, I never noticed the shaky camera, and I I did notice it in Bad Boys at the start when they're in the car, and I'm like, whoa, I get it, I get it. Like, once you notice it, you can't unnotice it, and I'm starting to get a little bit seasick. Um, but it only seemed to be in the car. It was like he's like, well, this is my car, car kind of driving shake to make you think they're in a car and they're driving yeah to be clear it's it's not just shaky cam it's the camera is always in motion it never stops so it, it, it's shaky in the car because he's trying to communicate with driving we're in the car as, as you've just described but also everything like every, the camera never st- it sweeps it goes from the feet to the face it goes across the room it's Start, uh, starts high and comes low it's always panning and sweeping and moving and zooming in and zooming out and it's it's non-stop it's relentless um so it's more than just the shaky cam it's this whole kind of forever in motion thing which i, is, I it, quite it like doesn't look very real <laughs> i quite like it's dynamic the well it action. has its place yeah yeah, it absolutely has its place. Like uh, while we were watching it, there was a moment uh, I noted it down, but I also mentioned it in the chat. There's the shot. There's one shot that's the sort of central shot of the film that everybody knows, and it's after they've just done the the chase. They've just been running through the streets chasing after the bad guys, and the two of them have just kind of f- fallen to the floor. They've just the bad guys have just got the better of them and, and got away. Spoiler alert. And they both stand up all kind of sweaty and knackered and, you know, bits of grit in their elbows from <laughs> rolling around. And the camera does that, that the Dutch angle, which is the where it looks from below you, slightly up from a from a slightly funny angle and sort of pans up into their faces. And it's the it's that kind of moment of action movie cool communicated perfectly in the film. And it has its place. But it's it never stops. It's constant. Like you don't have to be dynamic while two of the characters are discussing the plot. I get that. I get it. I get it. Right. Um, but Bad Boys doesn't have it as much. No, it doesn't have it. Well, again, I'm not gonna. I'm, I, I quite like. I do quite like it. I like Bay. I like The Rock. I love Transformers. Shia LaBeouf. I think he's got enough. Like zip and ping on his own when he's on a rant oh my god like it's good it's not deep (laughs) it's got no hidden meanings it's not going to win an oscar um but as a a two-hour sit down lose yourself in a engaging and nice looking story i quite like it however we will not labor on that because we did that on the rock um my (laughs) next i've got a couple of notes um in regards to Tia Leone, I don't remember her getting on my tits as much as she did when we rewatched it. I, I wanted her, yeah. I wanted to get shot. I don't give a I don't give a shit. Like she's annoying. Like stop whining. Yeah. I don't think I don't think Michael Bay particularly does female characters very well. She wasn't she wasn't written very well. She wasn't directed very well and they, they, they just. She was very two dimensional, wasn't she? Just like nagging lady, no depth to it at all. No, well, the the female leads in the Transformers. What the um, Megan Fox? She's quite. I quite like her. She was a good character. Well, as in that she wasn't annoying, and she had a bit of backstory, and you know she was a bit rough around the edges. And then in what's it Transformers? Is it the second one when he's got a different girlfriend? Uh, and then she ends up being a, involved in the downfall of Megatron. But again, she's not annoying. Tia Leone, oh my God, she just whinges and whines. And her character is mm. called Julie Mott, which made me laugh. And if you don't know why, Google the word Mott 
on your uh, not on your work computer um <laughs> and go to the urban dictionary um if you're in america you may have to search the uk urban Dic- dictionary uh but yeah nothing nothing like her mate that gets shot spoiler i like she seems really nice super nice and then her homeless jobless photographer mate who tags along with her prostitute friend to a party and doesn't realise that she might have to shag a bloke, um, <laughs> is just annoying. Um, so there's that. That that's a, a big downfall uh, for the, the. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love love the film. Uh, it's, I really love the film, but she's annoying and she could have been done better. Um, I'm ranting a little bit. Did you want to add anything to the Tia Leone? Mott Gate. No, well, she's just she's the, she's just a MacGuffin, isn't she? That's the she serves no other purpose than to just be this this witness that they have to protect. Eye candy. Yeah, she is. She's just a, which is a shame because you're right. She could have been so much more, uh, and and she isn't. She's just a she, she's just treated like a a thing to drive the plot forward. Yeah, and. In all accounts, I'm just having a look through uh, previous movies. It's not as if she's, I mean, she's done a lot of stuff. She's obviously like cap- a capable actress, <laughs> you know? Yeah, she's very she's very good in, um, I watch Madam Secretary, which is a political thriller that, yeah. she's, that she's the main character of. So maybe her, her abilities were not the best, um, what's the word? Utilized. Utilized, good word, yeah. Um, Thank you. The other, I've got another point, which is the baddie <laughs> is... Fouché. Fouché is faux shit. Uh, <laughs> he's such a wannabe Hans Gruber. Um, there's, well, he's European. Well, he's European. Like, if some of the stuff that you, we went, if, if yeah, we, uh, we reviewed Die Hard... Uh, a couple of episodes ago if you've not listened to that go back and listen to that and we we talked about Hans Gruber and you picked up loads of good points about how he gets involved Fouché also gets involved he was part of the um the heist um yeah. getting sucked up and down a pipe for uh, some unknown reason um he is pretty cool and under control most of the time he's got a plan the plan is going you know it's it's a step ahead again of the police in regards to what he's doing. Um, he even at one point in that party, that <laughs> even the bit when he shoots the the Doris, he has a little snack. He picks up a little bit of the party food, and I was like, "Oh, he's definitely trying to be Hans Gruber because we talked about how." He does that. <laughs> um, but he is just lacking in any form of anything. Black. Well, he's he's really he's just bland. thuggish, isn't he? He's just he's just a he is just a thug, and. I I noted down. I find it hard to believe that he was the mastermind mastermind behind behind all the criminal endeavor because he comes up with this plan, this really clever plan to steal the heroin. He's lined up a buyer. It's worth millions, but his solution to everything is just to shoot people. <laughs> and when, <laughs> when he should have shot her, he takes her hostage. Yeah, it's it's very strange, and he and he's just a lumpy thought. Like the he's got this lab technician, and the lab technician's going, "Well, you know, the condi- we're going as fast as we can, but the conditions." And he kind of sort of headbutts him and says, "You're messing with my fucking schedule." And you're like, "What?" But aren't you the guy who came up with some whole like escaping through the pipes using the ventilation system, really complicated heist from a police station, huh? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and he and he's just like a like an angry bulldog in he all the time i tell yeah i get where you're coming from totally there's just no there's no depth or layers to him whereas hans gruber he had something else best, x factor best baddie of all time yeah um so yeah totally yeah i'm buying what you're selling there because he was a bit pants he was but also like i am convinced by the bulldogishness of him that you wouldn't want to have a run in with him oh no yeah he was um he was very stereotypical baddie um, and speaking of stereotypes, the skinny henchman with the tash and then the fat henchman. <laughs> I love his tash. I wrote his tash down. <laughs> were both massive stereotypes for the um, just the notable henchman. 
<laughs> yeah, he's like, there's too much killing, I'm getting aggravated. And then he runs out into the street and starts firing shots off into a restaurant <laughs> over the road. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah, they were. You're absolutely right. And the sledgehammer dude as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, so if ever in your life you need to assassinate a madam who's on her own in a house with no security and no one else, mm. and you have access to, um, you've got access to guns, Yeah. why the fuck are you taking a sledgehammer? <laughs> well, I think the implication was that he... There was like a, he's taking a twisted pleasure in it, like he's a bit fucked up. Yeah, but that I I, I get it, but that's not, I mean, that's, I not I, that's not explained enough. I mean, other than that, he is again generic henchman with you know beret. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> henchman henchman one with beret, henchman yep. two with Ash, henchman three with cardiac arrest. Yeah, <laughs> um, so that was a bit odd. I mean, they're supposed to be slick professionals, like literally. It would be, I mean, she doesn't even have double glazing, you know, tap in silence gun in the head out done before Will Smith turns up. Uh, no need, yeah. no need to wash your hands in the sink afterwards, <laughs> 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 but we are picking and we are, are taking away from what is nevertheless a great movie, a movie made great by, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence as their characters. So the final question I have in regard to the movie is, is Smith and Lawrence one of the best action duos ever? No. Not even up there with them? Mm, no. They're good. But I can't say great. Ooh. I can't do it. So if you had, say, at the top, you had... Um, Mel Gibson and Danny Glover. Mm -hmm. And at the bottom, he had, I don't know, Pinky and Perky. <laughs> what, action duo? <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where would you fit them in? Are, you, are they, are they a, a five out of ten? A, an eight yeah, out of ten? I'd, I'd put them a six, six and a half. Ooh, that's low. Yeah. yeah. What would On that vein, what would your, your favourite action duo be? Uh, ooh. I know, on the spot. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, I've always been a big fan of Riggs and Myrtle. I like the back and forth. Uh, Willis and Samuel L. Jackson in Die Hard 3. Yeah. That's a really good duo. I mean, I'm struggling beyond that, to be honest, <laughs> on the spot. I know, it's hard uh, to put you on the spot. Now, I, I, in my opinion, I mean, they're up there. I think they're brilliant. I mean... There's a reason they regenerated the whole series or films uh, with them in so recently because, like, they are the the chemistry between them. They're good. I think they're up there. I'd be interested to hear what our listeners think the top action duo would be. Uh, would it be your Will Smith and your Martin Lawrence, or are you thinking Lethal Weapon or Die Hard Three? Perhaps Tango and Cash is your uh, duo. Oh, of Tango and Cash. That's a that's a good one. I was just trying to think of uh, what's the. I'm struggling for the character names and the names of the movies. Like you've got um, who are the who are the two cops in Beverly Hills Cop? Oh, yeah. And you've got the Lanky Square. They're really they're really good and really funny. And then you've got um, oh bloody hell, for another forty eight hours. Forty eight hours. Oh yeah, Eddie Murphy hours. and. Um... Oh, what's his face with the chin? Uh, 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 Nick Nolte. Nick Nolte, that's it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I mean, do, would we include, I don't know, Indiana Jones and his dad? <laughs> I, I think there's scope to do that. Um, would we include Jake and Elwood from the Blues Brothers? Mm, you're pushing it now. Is that a stretch too far? I mean, I like some of the modern stuff, like uh, Denzel Washington and uh, what's his in the face, Mark Wahlberg in Two Guns. I think is really good. Uh, and then speaking of Denzel Washington, you got him with Ryan Reynolds in Safe House, which is another good two-hander. <laughs> I've just stopped you dead. You still there? <laughs> you are. I was just looking to see what his character, the, the guys in. Um, I was struggling a little bit. Then I should do is Taggart, Taggart, and. Billy, and there's three dots. Rosewood. 
Rosewood, that's it. Thank Taggart you. and Rosewood. That would annoy me. I couldn't continue on without checking that. Sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, then to to sum up, uh, we have picked some holes in in the movie, and there are some gaping holes in plotline and why there is so much ether uh, in a drugs exchange. Uh, yeah, I, no I was, reason I was, whatsoever. I was like, why is the ether everywhere but actually in the lab? Yeah, why have they taken their barrels of explosive ether from the lab? It's like, oh, here's a deal for you. Not only are we going to give you this $10 million worth of heroin, but um, we've got some leftover ether. Would you like that? Yeah, the, the previously we had parked out the front of our club. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there are many holes. However, the movie is a classic. It is fantastic, and you should all go and watch it many, many times. <laughs> and that concludes Bad Boys. Now, on to the next one, and this one I'm incredibly excited about. It's one that I have not seen for a very, very long time. May I take you, ladies and gentlemen, back to 1977? Can I take you to a time when in America the highways were the place to be, where you did not communicate by telephone, you only communicated by CB radio, which was mounted on your dashboard, because we are going to Smokey and the Bandit, people. My word. <laughs> Is it on? Have you had a look and seen? It's on Netflix, and we will party with Smokey and yourselves when we set the time. <laughs> I had loads to say about bad boys. You just... <laughs> oh, shit. Sorry. Should we... I, I was trying to make it all structured and stuff. Um, let's cut, cut you in now. We can just edit that a little bit out and chuck it on the end. No, it's all right. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry, mate. It's, a, it's all right. Um, Smokey and the Bandit, then. <laughs> no, no, I feel bad now. So what did you think of the movie, Chris? Yeah, so I actually don't... I, I don't think it's as great as... <laughs> <laughs> as all that oh well thank you very much for your uh, opinions on to the next segment <laughs> <laughs> you just had a massive old gush about it and i'm i'm not i mean i like it well enough and i enjoy it and i find it the most tolerable of the michael bays but uh, and to repeat myself i think it's good not great <laughs> go on <laughs> give us give us what give us your notes give us the rest of your notes well it's um i just it's, it's so formulaic. I think it's just retreading ground that the likes of the Lethal Weapons and the 48 Hours have done before. Um, it's got an angry, pissed-off chief who shouts a lot. You've got the internal affairs about to close you down because of something that's not their fault, You know, which is all very, um, very stereotypical of these types of movies. The, a lot of the action set pieces are just retreads, retreads of action set pieces that we've seen a bazillion times before and i don't think they actually had anything interesting to them even down to the you forgot your boarding pass you know cheesy line before the final shot and stuff which also i noted down had a weird a weird beat to it he says you forget your boarding pass and then he doesn't shoot and there's like a weird <laughs> moment's pause that weirds me out um like that ch- like that chase we were talking about before will smith with his shirt flapping open running through the street like he's going to catch up with a car but then just this through a photo shoot into then a bunch of old ladies getting their hair done then through a load of paraplegics and then they even drove the car through a few bins in an alleyway at one point i'm just like come on <laughs> it's just so the ground has been so well trodden and it doesn't bring anything new or interesting to it at all. And it didn't back then either in 1995. Like a recipe for a good cake. Even down to the, like the acoustic guitar with the little sad little thing that, that was stripped right out of lethal weapon, like straight out of lethal weapon. It may have even been the same little sad acoustic guitar thing that was going on, you know, um the the only thing that carries it is as i say the will smith martin lawrence dynamic but even then like martin lawrence and his whole thing about will smith having an affair with his wife is that not just utterly unconvincing like would he genuinely really believe that that's what was going on everyone wants to be like mike (laughs) i I know mike's a 
uh, womanizer and all that. But I think genuinely that you get this sense of history between the two of them and that they've saved each other's lives many, many times. Would it, I don't know. I just find that really unconvincing and like just a, a weird bit of storyline to, to go down. It is a weird bit that doesn't really fit in, isn't it? Yeah. And then funny things like the catch that speaking of the affair. So he goes to the house, doesn't he? And the two other coppers capture those two guys who were sat out, out the front of the house and they take him back. And there's like this weird interrogation scene that's in a, that's just like, you know, in a toilet <laughs> or something. <laughs> it's and a it's, weird toilet. Yeah. And it's all just a bit odd. And he's, he's just got him by the scruff of the neck by his collar. Like, <laughs> like some sort of fifties police officer arrested a, <laughs> a vandal, you know, and I don't know what's going on here. Got, got him by the scruff of the collar, and just there's just so much about it that's just really ill thought out and, and not put together at all. Well, uh, and I'm not even sure I'm all that impressed by the action in it. So there you go. <laughs> As I said, an absolute classic that everyone must go and watch. Like, what did Martin Lawrence think was going to happen when he jumped on top of the taxi? He's trying to stop him. He's not thinking. He's just just his reactions, <laughs> his heroic reactions as a. Badass policeman. Got the internal affairs. We're going to close you down if you don't get these drugs back. It's like, hang on a minute, love. We seized these in the first place. We're a really good narcotics unit, as a matter of fact. <laughs> maybe, maybe you should talk to the people who manage security at the station. <laughs> Don't know. You know. I like Joe Pantaleone though, smoking his cigar while he's shooting hoops. Brilliant. <laughs> And he's, he has a level of sarcasm that is unmatched. Yes, you can tell. Like his character probably is in it the same amount as the baddie, <laughs> possibly. And the, possibly. the difference in depth to that character is is significant. Yeah, he's brilliant. He is brilliant. Have we finished? Because I, I ended this segment a while ago, and now it's all gone a bit. Wild. Yeah, you did. Yeah, let's wrap it up. <laughs> are you going to like chop it all up or are we just going to end like that? We'll just leave it. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> we'll in that it. case, to wrap up this segment, as I have already done so, that was Bad Boys. Please, please, please check out the Facebook page so you can see when we'll be setting up the uh, Netflix party for the classic 1977 Smokey and the Bandit. Uh, and we will hopefully join you then. Mm. Right, here we are then, folks. So we've just had the war drums, which means it's our third rando segment, even though this many episodes later, it's still a rather inappropriate <laughs> segue. Because <laughs> yeah. we're, not, we're not debate battling anymore. Uh, but I've got no idea. I'm completely completely clueless as to what I'm walking into for this segment here. So I'm going to hand over to my man, Mr. England over there, to get us into it. Well, I would like to welcome you to the... M- mod extras first ever pointless quiz right <laughs> is this because you've been reading richard osman <laughs> a little bit that was maybe giving me the idea now i'm going to run you through the pointless quiz there are four rounds different rounds have different ways of setting up we will go through how we do it uh and uh the fourth round will be your eventual win or loss so we're starting off with round one. Let's get kick straight into it. If you can find any theme tunes, then put them in now. Oh, nice. I thought I got away with that. Cool. So, round one. Round one is easy enough. Like the game show, I'm going to give you some topics. I'm going to give you two topics. Okay. And I'm going to ask you to give me two answers for each topic. Now, if you can keep your overall points under 150, 
you will gain a point and that point will become significant in round four. Right. Okay. So I'm going for the lowest answer, aren't I? The most, the least. The least, yes. So you want to get as low uh, points as possible. Play along at home. If um, if there's enough interest, I can put the answers on to the Facebook page. So round one, question one. Okay. And the title of this round is Disney Cartoons. Right. And the stipulation is Walt Disney animated feature films. Caveat, looking at the list, it doesn't include Disney Pixar. So just Walt Disney animated feature films, so Disney Studios only. Roger that. Uh, between 1990 right. and 2008. 2008. I want two answers from you. Yeah. Uh, one after the other, and then I'll do the little little sound effect and let you know what you get. Two answers, and these are what the what am I going for? Least watched, least mentioned, is it? So, a um, hundred people were asked to name them, name as many as they can in a minute, and it's the. Have you not watched Pointless? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's the the least. So it's, it's the the least answered. So when a hundred people were asked to name as many as they could in a minute, these were the you want to go for the least mentioned. The least mentioned. And you want two from me? Two, please. Um, so I want stuff that's less obvious. Oh, what was the one? Um, uh, like Aztec. Uh, the, the Emperor's en- Emperor's Groove. Emperor's New Groove. The Emperor's New Groove. Yeah, I think that was within your window of time. When did you say? 90 to 2008. Let's start the little doody doo thing. It's pointless. Zero. Well done. Yes. That's a big one straight off the bat. I quite liked that one, actually. I had, um, yeah, it's really good. There was a character in it called Gronk that Penny really loved. There's a series as well, Gronk, that on the Disney Channel were following Gronk, weren't there? Uh, I did, it was them. I did not know that. Question. Uh, Go on then. Give me another one. Uh, right. So again, I need an obscure one. I mean, my head immediately goes to the Little Mermaids and Beauty and the Beast and Lion Kings of the world, but that's not going to help me out here, is it? Um, what was what was the one with what's his face in it? Oh shit! You know, he's really famous now. Uh, Joseph, Joseph Gordon Levitt. He, he's obviously really massive now, but there was one that he did a voice in. Hmm. Oh shit. I want to say it's like a twist on Treasure Island, but they're in they fly. Oh uh, yeah, I know the one you're talking about. Oh, fuck it off. Treasure, treasure, treasures, treasure, treasure planet, treasure planet, treasure planet. Boo is one. Ooh, okay, well. That's pretty good. That's good, though, isn't it? To keep yeah. it under 150. You could yeah. have had to give you some more answers. Uh, you could have had other pointless answers, and there were quite a few. Brother Bear, Oof, Chicken no Little. Idea. I didn't even know that was Disney, Ch- Chicken Little. Dinosaur, Fantasia 2000, Hercules. No, no one mentioned Hercules. No one mentioned Hercules, apparently. Home on the Range, Lilo and Stitch. Oh, Lilo and Stitch. Again, I'm surprised no one mentioned Lilo and Stitch. Meet the Robinsons. Oh, yeah. And the Rescuers Down Under would have all secured. Oh, I love the Rescuers. Cool. Good start. Good start. That means you've got quite a big you know, margin for error on this next two answers you're going to give me. Okay. Okay, next one. So to f- finish off round one, the next question is, it's a movie round, uh, surprisingly, being that we talk about nerdy movie stuff uh the the heading is john travolta and the question Ooh. is films that the prolific actor has appeared in or performed in as a voiceover from 2000 to 2009 okay uh what's the one where is the angel with the wings um uh, my michael is it is that your final answer yeah i think it's called michael a hundred points there. Hundred? He's not on the list. Really? 
I'm googling that in a minute. All right, um, f- f- phenomenon, the one where he had the brain power thing. Very sad ending. Remember, this is between 2000 and 2009, so it's relative. Oh, am I naming stuff from the 90s here? Then maybe, possibly, not oh, to give shit. you uh, too much of a clue, but try not saying what you just said and go for another. one. Uh, John Travolta in the early 2000s. Oh, uh, what was the one he was in with um, Hugh Jackman? What was that one? Oh, shit. I can't remember the name of it at all. I had this really great slow-mo explosion scene in it. Oh, with um, um, Halle Berry. Yes, that's it. Yeah, that's- what the hell was that called? I can't really I can't tell you who would ruin the quiz. I know, but I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> Swordfish. Boom. I mean, let's see if that's right. And that was only eight people said that. So you have raped in with 109 from my 150 list. We could have had. So there was a few. Um, Pointless ones, which are a bit obscure. Things like Austin Powers in Gold Member, uh, a love song for Bobby Long, Basic Lonely Hearts, a love song for Bobby Long again. Not sure why that's printed oh, twice. Uh, basic basic is also printed again. Uh, Lonely Hearts is printed twice on this card, so that must be an error. Um, there's also things like uh, The Punisher. Um, Wild, yeah, he was the villain, money. Yeah, Wild Hogs, which is a classic. I like that. With uh, Tim Allen. Yeah. Um, Ladder 49, Hairspray. Uh, oh, Hairspray. Bolt would, could have been an answer in both questions, actually. Um, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be Cool was one I liked. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good one. I like the first one, Get Shorty. Anyway, so round one done. and you. Michael, is a John Travolta film then. I've just got the wrong period. You must have done. It's not on the list, although there's plenty of double prints on there so um you have got one point to help you towards round four let's move straight on to okay. round two now round two is going to be i will give you a selection of answers some of which are right some there's one that will be wrong and at least one well no some could be wrong some could be pointless and some could be right but People might have also mentioned it. So same thing. People were asked to name as many as possible. Um, so it'll get you'll get an idea when we start going through it. So round okay. two, um, I'm going to give you a list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, things, and then you pick one which you think is going to be the most pointless and correct. Uh, so round two, round one. Yeah, that makes doesn't make sense but never mind uh is sylvester yeah. stallone okay. and it is film okay. in which sylvester stallone appears so let right. me run through the answers now some of these will be wrong some of these are pointless some of these are right but you get points uh what i'm looking for from you is do not get any of the wrong answers so the points are irrelevant i just need to make sure that you get through four of these without getting the wrong answer and hopefully they'll be pretty straightforward so sylvester stallone films the list for the first bit. Not within a date range. No date range. I'm going to give you the, the films. So uh, uh, here we go. So you've got the choice of Death Race 2000. Right. Judge Dredd. Assassins. Right. The Specialist. Nighthawks. Rocky Four, Or Million Dollar Baby. And I'm going for the lowest. I'm still going for the lowest. Yeah, go for the lowest. But just don't get it wrong. And you'll be laughing. Uh, Nighthawks. Nobody's mentioning Nighthawks. I'm not doing the diddlers. That's right. That is a pointless answer. The one that was wrong on that list was Million Dollar Baby. So the next one is uh, again another list. Try and get the pointless one, but do not get it wrong. So we've got Rhinestone, Cliffhanger, Scarface, Rocky Five, Raging Bull, Daylight, Escape to Victory. And, and I've got to not name the one that he's not in. Yeah, yeah. Pick one, but don't pick one he's not in. Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger is the right answer. It's 15 people said it, but it um, uh, doesn't matter. In the uh, game I made up 10 minutes ago, format that we're running. So uh... that's all good. Right. 
the next one we'll have another one of these then we'll go on to round three and then we'll hit you with the round four super finale folks hold on to your okay. hats so this one is same again and it is batman villains nice and easy for you Ooh, nice cool. and easy so enemies of the superhero batman either from the films or from the tv series so Thanks, the first seven i have got for you is poison ivy false face sandman joker siren bookworm catwoman and i've got a name the one ones that definitely are i can't just just one that as far as i'm concerned i just want a correct answer if you want to look clever in front poison of friends ivy. poison ivy is correct it 14 people said that uh the pointless answers were false face and bookworm the incorrect answer was sandman obvs uh and yeah. the joker got a smashing 94 uh, out of 100 so good one to avoid that absolutely so last of this painful round which is these <laughs> seven answers same again batman villains we have got egghead kitty pride headstone mr freeze penguin riddler scarecrow uh mr freeze again nice and safe 16 people said him very low in fact uh the pointless answer was egghead uh, and K- Kitty Pride and Headstone were both false. So you collect another point on your journey to round four. Right. Round three. It is a head-to-head round, which will be interesting because there's just the one of you. So <laughs> we'll make it work. <laughs> we certainly can. Let's have a look. I'm going to give you a choice, I think, of categories. You can have yeah, – let's go for these three. You can have the category called Danny Boyle. You can have the category of characters from 40 Towers. Or you can have the category called Actors in the Young Ones. Let's do Actors in the Young Ones. Actors in the Young Ones. Okie doke. Now, what I want from you is an answer under 30. Under thirty, if you can Three get zero. if you can get me an answer which is thirty or less, you can get another point towards round four. Right, one of the actors, and it's any of the five actors who appeared in every episode of the nineteen eighties BPC sitcom The Young Ones. Uh, every episode, every episode, and there was five actors. So I reckon Alexi Sale. Bang on. 19 people said Alexi Sale, uh, which is surprising that 19 people knew that Alexi Sale was in every episode of The Young Ones. However, no one knew that Hercules was uh, a Disney film from the 90s. But (laughs) there you go. Uh, So that's right. In fact, you'd have got it unless you'd have said Rick Mail, because Rick Mail's 50. Aid Edmondson was on 27. Nigel Planer, 20. And Christopher Ryan on 5. So you have... To keep this train a-rolling, all three points going to the final round. Now, the final round is simple. Just like the TV show, I will take three answers from you. And if you get a pointless answer, then you are our winner. Now, we have a number of categories that you can choose from now you've got three points so that means i'm going to add three categories on to the one i was going to choose for you right um so let's do that one that one that one and that one so i had another one here but it's just a bit of a trick. It's Mr. Men characters, but there's only one pointless Mr. Men character and there's like a massive list. So I think it's well unfair. <laughs> so we are not going to do that one. We are going to do so. Your I wouldn't do very well at that one. Choice. In fact, the only the only pointless Mr. Man is Mr. Cool. Um, <laughs> so categories that you can choose from. So you've got David Bowie. Right. Multi-Oscar winners. Right. Songs from the film Grease. Wow. And Jodie Foster films. Oh, let's do, um, what was the first one again? Sorry. David Bowie, multi-Oscar winners, songs from Greece, Jodie Foster. Let's do David Bowie. Okie doke. 
I had a feeling that you would have done. That would have been the one I'd have picked anyway. Uh, <laughs> so here we go. Any solo single released by David Bowie that reached the UK top 40 up to the right. end of 2009. I'm oh, guessing wow. that this was made in 2009 because a lot of the stuff is up to 2009. Oh, 2009. <laughs> so I'm that. We, have, um, we have a list of everyone here, which is obviously not, not negotiable and is the final correct answer. So what I'm wanting for you is, and you can have uh, a minute to think, uh, is what, yeah, three answers for me which is any solo single released by david bowie that reached the uk top 40 up to the end of 2009 and there'd be pointless answers and i'm looking for the l- pointless yeah, a pointless answers the most obscure the most okay yeah un- the laughing gnome okay the laughing gnome oh my god you're some kind of weird david bowie freak <laughs> Okay, that is. I've written that down. That's your first one. Um, I don't, I'm feeling confident in that one. Um, one that people wouldn't mention. Yeah. Diamond Dogs. Okay, Dave. That's your second answer. And it's the pointless aspect. Also, some of these I'm not sure are singles. I know a lot of his songs, but I've listened to the albums. Um, like your golden years and your space oddity and fame and stuff. I think loads of people will say those. Heroes is well known. Let's do uh, Breaking Glass. I think that was a single in the late 70s. Uh, which one are you the most confident about? Uh, the gnome, laughing gnome. Okay, and which one are you the least confident about? Diamond Dogs. I think Diamond Dogs is fairly well known. Okie doke. So, let's do this. So, David Bowie, any solo single released by David Bowie that reached the UK top 40 up to the end of 2009. The first one that we're going to put through our pointless Eliza is Diamond Dogs. Q sound effect. Do, 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 do. And that has got three. Oh. So it's close. Number two that you gave me was called Breaking Glass. Yeah. Let's start the machine of noise. And do, 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 do. boom. It's not on the list. Not on the list? Not on the list. Maybe it wasn't a single. Maybe it was an album song thing that they do yeah. cool so your last chancer is called the laughing gnome which yeah. i have never heard of in my you've life. never heard the laughing gnome it was like is is famously bad <laughs> five no oh. <laughs> so you didn't win anticlimax however let me give you some of the pointless answers out there uh so we have got alabama song uh, okay yeah beauty and the beast uh yeah boys that was, that's around the same time as breaking glass i'm sure boys keep swinging yeah day in day out dead man mm-hmm. walking you could yeah. add dj drive in saturday everyone says hi hello space boy john i'm only dancing again John, I'm only dancing. Um, coincidentally, has won. Uh, jump, they say. Little wonder, loving the alien miracle. Good night, never let me down. Rock and roll, suicide, seven and sorrow. Yeah. The man who sold the world, survive. The heart's the filthy the lesson. Nobody said the man who sold the world. No one said the man who sold the world. Well, there you go. Thursday's child, the will crawler, TV C15 underground and wild okay. is in the wind so there's quite a few and they're all pretty low so it obviously wasn't yeah, Dave them, Bowie yeah. fans that were uh, asked that question i'm surprised a couple of them weren't mentioned indeed well there you go a little bit rough around the edges 
Apologies for that. Hopefully you enjoyed it anyway and you played along at home. As I said, if there is a demand, I can post up the answers onto the Facebook page. If there's not the demand, then pretend you didn't hear it and let's go on to the outro. <laughs> let's do it. Well, there we are then, folks. As all things must, this episode of MOD Extra has come to an end. We hope you enjoyed listening as much as we enjoyed recording it. And we did. <laughs> so tune in in two weeks' time for Batman Nightfall, for Smokey and the Bandit, and for whatever other random third segment we put together. <laughs> Please do, if you are listening to this, you have got us on the YouTube, so please do subscribe uh, and like, uh, but mostly subscribe because we would like to keep you informed of when we do other stuff. Hit the notification bell and you can have us all to your heart's content. Yeah, that's right. Also, we're doing some video game stuff at the minute. We've been over on the Twitch doing some Apex Legends and I've just recently started a playthrough of the classic LucasArts game Day of the Tentacles. So Ooh. head on over to twitch.tv forward slash mod extra if that's of interest to you. Uh, and to reiterate something Andy mentioned before, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash mod extra. That's where we kind of put out our notifications, heads ups, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But certainly if you're interested in doing the watch party with us on Smokey and the Bandit, keep an eye out there because that's where we'll announce it and post the link and all that malarkey. Indeedly do's. Other than that, I think we've uh churned our way through quite a lot of stuff there should we wave goodbye yeah let's wrap that up that's going to be an editing job and a half that one Indeed. looking at the length of the recorded yeah <laughs> <laughs> oops so i've been chris aka true mr six and i've been andy aka marcus burnett <laughs> Got a cup of brown sugar, sugar. <laughs> see you later folks bye bye So that'd be good. Initial thoughts on Smokey and the Bandit? Um, Am I heading in a better direction? I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember much about it. There's a, isn't there a famous line? There's a famous line that I feel like. No, but I remember the CB radios and the and the um, uh, the sheriff. What's his name? Hog. Is it Hog? Or oh, no, he was the mayor. Oh, he no. Wait a minute. Boss, wait a minute. Boss that's Hogs, uh, um, uh, um, <laughs> the, the, the uh, good, good old boy. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm confusing my my southern American car things. <laughs> Easy to do. Well, there you go. Initial thoughts on Smokey and the Bandit. I thought it was Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> <laughs>